Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is December the 29th, 2017, Friday evening. I'm feeling a lot better. I still have a bit of a sniffle and cough. I'll try not to do that too much during this recording. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow evening at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, we will have our, I think it's number 10 already, live cast. And I have some topics that we're going to be discussing, and I'll... Uh, tell you more about that on the Facebook page. By the way, we are up to 414 members. Okay, this video is going to be about comparing Epson and Canon printhead technology, which one clogs faster than the other. So we'll be right back. Welcome back, and if this is the first time you land on this channel, obviously you must be interested in printing photos at home. And if that is the case, please consider subscribing and don't forget to click on the bell so that you don't miss anything we upload. So, I want to discuss, as was taught to me by someone who is actually in the engineering part of the printhead designs, they actually understand what actually takes place internally, which I did not know. What causes a clog? Well, you have two possibilities. Lack of use, which causes ink to just simply dry and crust itself onto the openings called nozzles, and that prevents ink from coming out effectively, and you get a missing nozzle, and you get banding on your prints. On a Canon, the same thing. If you don't use your Canon for, say, uh, several weeks, there's a possibility you will have a few nozzles that are clogged. And that basically comes from drying ink. In the case of a cannon, possibly also air infiltration back into the printhead. But the cannon is a especially difficult printer because of the thermal design of the printhead. It uses heat to shoot out that little bubble of basically boiling ink, whereas the Epson does not. The Epson is a cold fired type printhead system. So what happens if you, for some reason, especially if you are refilling your cartridges, whether you're using refillable carts for the Epson or for the Canon, if you have a cartridge in an Epson printer that's not feeding ink or is suffering from ink delivery problems, you're causing ink starvation, the Epson will not react adversely. It'll, it'll just show you that you're missing some nozzles and basically that'll be the end of it. You know, you fix your cart or get an OEM cartridge to replace that with it and your ink delivery will be back to normal. With the Canon, however, is a little bit different. If you come to the situation where you either, it could be a combination of two things. You haven't used your printer for a while and now your cartridge is not delivering ink at the correct level or amount required under a given demand according to whatever print you're printing. So if that happens, there's a possibility that that nozzle will begin to overheat a little bit. And if it reaches a certain threshold, the ethylene glycol that the ink base contains could possibly begin to coagulate and basically burn internally in that micro passage that is connected to that little resistor and the little opening. And once that happens, you begin a snowball effect. It's like human arteries if you start developing plaque. Once you get a plaque coating inside your artery, more and more and more cholesterol starts to attach itself to it. Finally, you have no opening. So that's what happens with a cannon printer. The Epson simply stops firing its clocks so you just run some cleaner through it and that will dissolve the ink. There is no problem with the overheating of the glycol base. There is no solidification. There's no um, anything. Anything that happens on a thermal printer will simply not happen on the Epson. So once you get that situation where you start to solidify a little bit of that component in the liquid base, and not to mention if you have a 
pigment printer. And you have to deal with pigment particles as well. So all of this stuff starts to accumulate. Boom, that nozzle is gone. It is burnt out. Luckily for this type of printer, it can be replaced automatically on the fly by a redundant nozzle. But on a Pro 100, that's not the case. The Pro 100 does not have the redundancy offered by this print head. That Pro 100, you know, it just has so many nozzles. The Pro 10 as well. And I don't know about the Pro 1. Possibly the Pro 1 has redundant nozzles. I really do not know. But that's what happened. It is a accumulation of this now solidified glycol base onto that opening. And once it starts to then block the flow of ink even slightly, the probability of that nozzle burning out increases exponentially. On an Epson printer, yeah, it's a pain in the neck because it just clogs all the time. But you can basically run cleaner through it and dissolve your, you know, clog. On a Canon printer, that is not the case. On a Canon printer, that stuff literally gets baked on by the fact that each droplet of ink has to be boiled onto the paper, exploded, splattered. And that is done by heat. The ink is there as well to not only print, but also to cool the printhead, to maintain it in a cool state. Cool enough that it will not develop the solidification of that glycol. And once that begins, that's it. It's just a snowball. Because um, you really don't know it's taking place until it is really too late at that point. So what can you do to prevent this? Well, simply this. Use OEM cartridges. Well, I don't want to use OEM cartridges. I want to refill my cartridges. I want to use Precision Colors inks. I want to use some other person's uh, company's inks. Make sure that when you refill, say for example, the Pro 100, make sure that you do that correctly. And the guys that we have prepared, not just me, but other people as well, are designed to give you the optimum ink flow. Once you start reducing that ink flow, okay, then you start increasing the probability of nozzles beginning to sort of get clogged. And once they get clogged, they overheat a little bit. Some of that glycol solidifies and the opening becomes smaller and smaller. Once that happens, that is it. Stick a fork in it. It's done. Now, so what can you do about that? Make sure that you refill your Pro 100 cartridges when they go low, never when they go empty. In fact, don't go past low. Once it hits low, the sponge is still super saturated. That means it's as ready as it would be if you still had ink in the liquid chamber. That level of saturation is maintained by ink automatically replenishing the sponge as ink is drawn out from the sponge to create prints. So you have to catch it at that point. In fact, the second it goes low, if you get a cart that's almost about to reach low, take it out at that moment, reset it, top it off. If you have the time, if you can do it really quick, top all of them off and reset them all. Reset them first, put the clip on it, top them off, remove the clip, pop them back in the printer. You will then start off with a full set of carts, one perch cycle instead of one every single cart. Okay, that's another thing you want to avoid. And that way your ink flow will be always optimal and you will never overheat your printhead because once you do that, that's it. It starts that, that snowball. Okay, and uh, you better have a couple of print heads stored away just in case. That's the way it is. That's the way they are designed. They are not designed for us to refill. Okay, that's not what they planned. That's us hacking the system. They're not designed for us to refill. So you have to be very, very conscious of that and make sure that you always refill your Pro 100, your Pro 10, you know, and maintain that ink flow. With the Pro 100, they have a sponge. With the Pro 10, it's not so critical. You can let those go empty because they have an ink bag. There's no sponge that you have to maintain at a certain saturation level, okay? So when you just have an ink bag, no problem. You can let them go empty, but just make sure that, you know, with the Pro 10 specifically, that also has an exit sponge, and that exit sponge has to be kept wet at all times. When you start dribbling ink into it to refill it, make sure you dribble ink all along its complete oval surface. You don't want to have just ink 
entering through the center and then the edges are dried. No, you don't want that because that will impede ink flow as well. And that is it. You have to have full ink flow that will prevent your Canon printheads from overheating. That will prevent the glyco from solidifying and that will prevent that snowball effect where nozzles start to close up so slowly you don't even notice it. By the time it's too late, like I said, it's just too late. Epsons, yeah, they're a pain in the neck because they clog all the time for a couple of weeks of non-use, but you can always unclog them, okay? Not so with a Canon printer. Maybe you cannot. Now, there are ways to wash the print heads, but you're getting into an area where you can actually do more damage than good. So that is it for now. Thank you so much for subscribing, sharing, and liking. Don't forget, Saturday evening, we're going to have our live cast. And in the next video that I'm going to do that I'll publish tomorrow morning or tomorrow during the day, I will tell you what the subject matter for tomorrow night's livecast will be. So thank you so much again. Happy printing, everybody, and bye-bye.